Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so blessed, praise God, today to be bringing God's word to you. Now, can we call for that daily bread? Remember the things I shared with you yesterday. Can we now, by faith, with great expectation in your heart, call for that daily bread? Join me right now, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hey, listen to me. God has spoken to people concerning you today. Oh, he has. He has. Don't let distractions turn your mind away. And sometimes distractions come from bad teachings. Distractions come from bad experiences. And let me tell you something about bad teachings. Oh, you see, the devil is so crafty. Now, you on your own, and we've, we've, we've experienced this thing. Here. So you on your own, and, and someone comes to you and start bad mouthing someone whom you know, someone who you 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 feel was a good person, and someone comes to you out of the blues and start about mounting that person where, to you. And then you begin to say, whoa, wow, I, I never knew. Now, be careful when things like that happen in your life. Unprovoked. Now, it's different if, if you know, there are circumstances where the Holy Spirit can use that to help you. See that now? For example, you're planning to do um, a certain business with that person and then someone who doesn't know what your dealings with that person comes and then starts telling you things about that person that speaks of concerning his character or that brings a lot of questions on his character regarding that business that you want to do with him now that's that's like a warning from the holy spirit to place a check now, the Holy Spirit is not outright to tell you don't do anything with that person. What he's trying to tell you is apply prudence and, 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 and look, listen, ask all the questions you need to ask. Don't just go into this thing because, and, and be smart about it. See that now? But then sometimes unrelated cases, somebody just comes and starts telling you something wrong about someone. Now, be very, very careful with that. Be very, very careful with that. Why? Because God may be planning for either you to be a blessing to that person or that person to be a blessing to you. And Satan is running ahead to scuttle that. Be very careful with that. Because after that period, God may now need you to come in contact with that person. But now because the person, you already have a bad thought about that person, you begin to drag your feet concerning it. See that? And, and that's how most times we make things difficult for the angels to carry out their functions. See, they are the background doing their job. But you see, when you don't guard your heart perfectly, the Holy Spirit is there. I told you it's the most important thing. The Holy Spirit is there. Jesus told us the best ministry he was going to carry out in our life. I call it the best ministry. It's the ministry of guiding us into all truth. So what do I do in situations like this? Someone comes to tell me something bad about someone. Before you take any decision, why don't you pray? Go before the Lord and say, Lord, I used to think this person was a good person. But these things I'm hearing, they are troubling. They are troubling. Lord, please, I pray. If these things are true, can you help guide this person right? You didn't hear those things to start thinking evil about the person. You heard those things so that you will be concerned about the person. And if you're genuinely concerned about the person, you will pray. You will pray. 
Now, here is how it works. If what the person has said is true, and truly the Lord wants you to avoid that person, because you pray, the Spirit of God will begin to confirm it. Yes. You will begin to see literally that that person, oh, really? Ah, So it's me that they didn't know who this person was. Wow. See that now? Now, now, all that is not so you hate the person. All that was to guide your dealings with that person. We are not called to hate anyone. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they have done or what they did to you. Listen, listen. Even the devil, we are not called to hate him. The reason I say that is this. Hatred is not found in our hearts. Hatred is one of the works of the flesh. It's not the fruit of the spirit. So we don't bear the fruit of hatred. No, praise God. It, it, it's not from us. So we don't hate people. You say, I, I hate the devil so much. It's not true. Now, you, you, when you say those things, they are not coming from the place of the spirit. They are coming from the place of the flesh. So even when you say, I hate the devil, it means you are already allowing the devil to control your life. I hate that person. You are allowing the devil to control your life because the devil works in the realm of the flesh. The flesh appeals to him so he can easily walk through your flesh. Love is a thing of the spirit. Love is not a thing of the flesh. So the, the devil can really not make you love somebody. Mm. You see that? He can't. Now, I know many things people call love. It's not love. See, the fact, oh, I love this person so much, so I, I cannot resist you. No, there's a difference between love and lust. Love carries in itself responsibility. You need to understand this. Love carries responsibility in itself. So the moment you think you are loving someone, now, what happens to you is this. A burden of responsibility about that person begins to come upon you. See that now? Now, that's why you cannot genuinely now, opposite sex included, that's why you cannot genuinely love somebody. And the first thing you're thinking about is how to have a sexual relationship with that person. That's not love. That is lost. That is lost. Love will make you take responsibility in your heart where this person is concerned. And what would you want to do? You would want to protect this person, even if it will cost you something. You want to protect that person. You want to see the well-being of that person. That's all you're concerned about. You're not concerned about what to take from that person. You understand that? Now, that's what genuine love is. And it's from the place of the spirits. You see that? So, in, on the other hand, hatred is a thing of the flesh. So, as a child of God, when you begin to confess hatred, when you say, I, I hate you, I just hate you. Hey, you have opened the door to the devil in your heart. And he is walking on you completely. I mean, he is taking charge over your life. I said, even the devil, we don't hate him. Why don't you hate the devil? Because he can harm us. We, you, know, you grow to that place in your life where you know that Satan cannot harm you. Now, there are many things we hear. And I told you yesterday, wrong teachings. You have to be careful about wrong teachings. Now, as a minister, I understand that you see, the truth that we walk in most times is not the truth everybody walks in. So when you're in the place of ministering to people, you have to sometimes come to the level of ministering to their needs. And in ministering to their needs, you have to come to their level of understanding. But when you come to their level of understanding to help them, don't leave them there. Bring them up. So when we want to minister, for example, there are people who 
um, you, you, you want to minister deliverance to them. And you know, most times, what keeps people in bondage is not the devil. Now, that's the truth. It doesn't matter the experience they have in life. Now, those things can become a distraction. Somebody say, every night I sleep, something used to press me. Every night I sleep, something used to press me. Now, the way the mind works, you begin to think, oh, this person needs prayers. This person needs to be delivered from that oppressive spirit. And if you begin to think in that direction, things will begin to come to your mind. And as the more you ponder on it, you begin to find things that are behind that person. But you see, the person can even tell you that it started after one of my uncles or one of my aunties said, I will see. Ah! That person is an occultic person. So someone told you, you would see. And after that statement, you began to see things in the night. And then you're like, oh, oh. now those are facts. So as a minister, you are thinking now, oh, we need to pray. Ah, we need to pray. You need to get into a seven days fast to break that bondage. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Understand something. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This, <laughs> you know, the Bible says, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Oh. It didn't say because of the anointing oil. It said because of the anointing. Now, what's that telling you? It's telling you, if you bring yourself and keep yourself in the place of the anointing, the body will be removed. The yoke shall be destroyed. Now, why would the yoke be destroyed? The yoke will be destroyed because it's been placed on you. Because it's been placed on you, there is something in you that will cause the yoke to be destroyed. Now, destroyed means wriggled, I mean, scattered. See that now? Now, if someone prays for you, the person is not ultimately helping you. The person is not, the person is only giving you a temporary relief. But if someone teaches you the truth or teaches you the truth, that's, listen, you know, many years ago, I, I, cause, cause sometimes you hear things like this and you begin to question a lot. Now, as a child of God, you must learn to question things. It's not everything you just allow to go down your throat. Okay. You know, sometimes people talk too much about the power of the devil and what the devil has done to people. And so you begin to question these things and say, but where's the power of God? Many years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, I was thinking all these thoughts. And I heard him say to me, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He just kept repeating it to me, as many. Now, when the Lord tells you something one, two, three times, shut down everything you're doing and pay attention. Because it happens sometimes, you just, you're just doing something and then you hear, it might be a scripture, you just throw a scripture at you. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. <laughs> okay, I'll check it. Then here in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Hey, shut down what you're doing and open it because he wants to open something up to you. So I'll just hear in that day, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as I said, so like, okay, so Lord, what are you trying to tell me? And then he said to me that as long as you allow my spirit to guide you, yet there is no way you will be subject to any kind of yoke and it will have an effect on you aha that makes sense if the lord tells me go this way and i go that way will the devil 
stop me from obeying the Lord? Can he do, does he have the ability to do that? The answer is no. Okay, so if I'm being pressed in the night and I'm thinking, how do I overcome this thing? What if I subject myself like, okay, you know what, Lord? I'm going to sleep when you command me to sleep from now on. All right, Lord, let's, let's, let's form a deal. I'm at your service, Lord. My sleep time is when you tell me to sleep. Now, the moment you offer those words to the Lord, you bring yourself under his lordship. You see, because now that statement in itself is bringing yourself, because by your words you shall be judged and by your words you shall be um, delivered. Now, by your words, now you say, Lord, I come under your lordship where my sleep is concerned. So you tell me when to sleep. <laughs> now, you are awake. Okay, I. what do I do? Study, pray. Not necessarily pray, Father, everything that is coming to press me. In the night, I bind. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Just, okay, Lord, I, I want to pray, but I don't know what to pray for. Can you tell me what to pray about? Because you've not told me to sleep yet, and, and I want to do something. See that now? Now, you grow, and then the Lord... Now, the moment you start, by the utterance of that word alone, I tell you the truth. The oppressive spirit will stop. I'm telling you how to deal with things like this. You bring yourself under the lordship of Jesus deliberately. But Jesus, I've already confessed Jesus as my Lord. Hey, it's not the confession. What, what have you done? Since you confess Jesus as Lord. Now I'm teaching you how to allow him reign as Lord over your life. In, in this area now, see? Okay, Lord, so I'll only do what you tell me to do. So I'll only sleep when you command me to sleep. What if I don't hear him command me to sleep? Then stay awake. What if I feel sleepy? When you feel sleepy, you will sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Now, 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 understand what I'm telling you. You don't say it in your mind. No, don't say it in your mind. You say it to the Lord. I don't mean shout it, but it must come out of your mouth. Lord, this is my deal with you right now. From henceforth, I will only sleep when you command me to sleep. One, you're opening the door for the Lord, like I said, to be Lord over your life where your sleep is concerned. Next, you are bringing yourself under that fellowship with him where you don't no longer own yourself. You are now a full servant of him. And you know the truth? In no time, he will tell you. He said, okay, this is what I want you to do because you've asked him. Ask and you shall receive. This is what I want you to do from henceforth. I want you to be sleeping from this time to this time. Okay? Thank you, sir. That's it. That is it. Now, <laughs> now, what's the secret behind that statement? Or what I just told you? What's the secret behind it? I'll tell you the secret. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So now I realize in the area of my sleep, I'm being defeated, meaning I'm really not living life in that area. So what do I need in that area of my life? It's not fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer will aid it. Understand what I'm saying? But what you need is not fasting and prayer because you can just tell yourself, okay, someone can even tell you, declare a 14 days fast or 21 days fast. And this thing will end. And then if you don't know what you are trying to achieve when you are fasting, you will only fast within that time frame and say, I have satisfied the requirements of my, you know, of my fast. So this thing should stop. It may stop for a while, but then it will come back. 
I'm telling you how to permanently deal with such things. Remember, we're talking about the most important thing. Now we've known the most important thing is the Holy Spirit, but now we're getting into the practicality of it. So the Lord speaks to you and says, Son, this is the time I want you to sleep. <laughs> Our time is up. Praise God. I've got to just stop now. Oh, glory, glory. Hey, we're going to continue from here tomorrow. I pray for you right now. Receive wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.